Nutrient Logistics in Alaska Nutrient Logistics in Alaska This presentation was created through a collaboration between the Alaska Association of Conservation Districts and the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service. For questions, please contact the conservation planners at your regional NRCS office. The foundation of growing any crop economically in Alaska is maintaining the optimal conditions for crop growth. Meeting the anticipated nutrient needs of the crop starts with determining the level of nutrients that are already in the soil and then supplementing with appropriate nutrient sources to meet any crop needs. Collect a representative soil sample. Ensure that the lab uses appropriate analytic procedures for Alaska soils. Specifically, the phosphorus determination must be a Malik 3 soil test. Use University of Alaska recommendations to meet the deficiencies. These recommendations are used in Alaska Tech Note 16. On the soil test results sheet, the NRCS recommendations are made from the buffer pH, the part per million phosphorus, the part per million potassium, and the part per million nitrogen. The part per million nitrogen is the sum of the nitrate and ammonium levels. Taking the results from the soil test, we look at Tech Note 16 to determine the amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium the soil might need. Quick reminder number one, NPK recommendations are not the actual nutrient levels. Nitrogen is given as the amount of N. Phosphorus is given as P2O5, and potassium is given as K2O. So if we look at the molecular weight of P2O5, phosphorus is 39, two of them give you 78. Oxygen is 16, five of them give you 80. So the whole phosphate molecule is 158. Of the 158, only 78 are truly phosphorus. So phosphorus is only 49% of phosphate's total weight. But all recommendations are given in terms of phosphate, not in terms of actual phosphorus. Potassium is very similar. Quick reminder number two. The NPK numbers on the bag are the amounts of nutrient released in one year. Conventional fertilizers are made with highly soluble materials that will become almost completely available in the season of application. 100 pounds of triple 16 will deliver 16 pounds each of N, P, and K this growing season, and almost nothing next growing season. On the other hand, certified organic nutrients are often made with less soluble material that will not become completely available in the season of application. Green sand is actually around 5 to 7% potassium, but only about half of that potassium will be expected to be released in the season of application, so its NPK label is 003. Quick reminder number three. There are three categories of nutrients. Conventional fertilizers are made with highly soluble and often highly processed materials. Certified organic nutrients. These are OMRI certified materials with minimal processing from their natural state. There are also local materials with nutritive value. These are locally available materials with adequate levels of NPK to justify the hauling and application costs for their nutrient contribution to meet crop needs. Some examples would be manure, compost, spent grain, spoiled crops, seaweed, and fish gurry. One of the first steps of making a nutrient recommendation is running the results through the Alaska Phosphorus Index Worksheet to determine if the nutrient management plan will be nitrogen-based or phosphorus-based. In calling a number of local vendors across the state, these four conventional fertilizers were available in 2022, 832 16, 10 20 20, 16 16 16, and 22 11 11. These were the most common fertilizers available. Since the recommendation calls for 60 pounds of nitrogen 
10 pounds of phosphorus and 40 pounds of potassium per acre, the ideal fertilizer ratio is 6 to 1 to 4. But when we look at the local available materials, 832.16 is very high in phosphorus, 10.20.20 is both high in phosphorus and potassium, in triple 16, N, P, and K are all equal. In 22, 11, 11, there's more nitrogen than phosphorus and potassium, so this is the closest to our desired ratio. Using 22, 11, 11, if we apply it at 100 pounds per acre, we're low in nitrogen and low in potassium, but we're right on target for phosphorus. At 275 pounds per acre of 22.11.11, we've got the nitrogen on target, but now we've got too much phosphorus and too little potassium. At 360 pounds of 22.11.11 per acre, we've hit the potassium target, but now we're over on the nitrogen and phosphorus recommendations. When we filled out the original Alaska Phosphorus Index worksheet, our original phosphorus index was based on 10 pounds per acre as the recommended. If we use 275 pounds of 221111, we have to recalculate the phosphorus index using our proposed 33 pounds per acre of phosphorus instead of 10 pounds per acre of phosphorus. Adding up the values in our Alaska Phosphorus Index worksheet, we're still below the 40 cutoff point so our nutrient management plan is still nitrogen-based, and there should be minimal environmental detriments to applying the additional phosphorus. If we apply 275 pounds per acre of 22.11.11, we're on target for nitrogen, about 20 pounds per acre over on phosphorus, and about 10 pounds per acre under on potassium. If over the years the phosphorus level increases, future nutrient management plans may become phosphorus-based. At 275 pounds per acre, on a 100-acre hayfield, we're going to need 27,500 pounds of fertilizer, or about 14 tons of 22-11-11. Another option is to custom blend single nutrient fertilizers to create the optimal combination. One source of nitrogen is urea, 4600. One source of phosphorus is triple superphosphate, 0450. And a source of potassium is potash, 0063. 130 pounds of urea gives 60 pounds of nitrogen. 22 pounds of triple superphosphate gives 10 pounds of phosphorus. And 64 pounds of potash gives 40 pounds of potassium. So 214 pounds of a mixture of urea, triple superphosphate, and potash would exactly meet the needs that we have for that hayfield. Of the 214 pounds, 60 pounds are nitrogen, 10 pounds are phosphorus, 40 pounds are potassium, and 104 pounds of the 214 pounds are inert materials that are in the fertilizer. We've effectively made a custom fertilizer of 28% nitrogen, 4.5% phosphorus, and 19% potassium. For one acre amounts, these 214 pounds can be easily mixed by hand. For larger fields, five or 10 acres, the 1,000 pounds or 2,000 pounds could easily be mixed together in a rented concrete mixer. For larger orders, have the supplier custom blend the fertilizer. The custom blenders don't necessarily use urea triple superphosphate or potash to hit the blend. There are actually some other more cost-effective materials that they use as part of the blend. There are two facilities in Alaska that will custom blend fertilizer. Alaska Mill and Feed in Anchorage will custom blend amounts greater than two tons, and the Farmers Cooperative in Delta Junction will custom blend amounts greater than one ton. Although neither of these operations offer delivery services, both of them will work with local trucking firms to deliver the product if necessary, 
but most farmers choose to pick up the materials themselves. The Alaska Farmers Cooperative does have a fertilizer spreader available. In calling around the state for the commercial sources of fertilizer, we found that Wagon Wheel in Homer, Panama Reds in Kenai, Alaska Mill and Feed in Anchorage, Alaska Farmers Cooperative in Delta Junction, and the big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, Fred Meyers, and Walmart statewide carry 25-pound bags or 50-pound bags. The most common formulations available were 83216, 161616, 102020, 221111, and 241210 5S. Any number beyond the first three NPK are always identified by the elemental number, so the 5S means there's 5% sulfur in that mixture. The grower wanted to use organic nutrients for the potato patch, so 865 pounds of cooked bone meal would provide 26 pounds of nitrogen, 129 pounds of phosphorus, and no potassium per acre. 450 pounds of blood meal would supplement the nitrogen with 54 pounds, but not provide any P or K, and 820 pounds of langbonite per acre would supply the 180 pounds per acre of potassium that's needed. By adding all three of these materials on a per acre basis, we'll meet the desired needs for the nutrient management plan. When we look at the 865 pounds of bone meal, 450 pounds of blood meal, and 820 pounds of langbonite, these amounts are on a per acre basis. But at 20,000 feet, we don't have a full acre. We have a little under a half an acre. So we multiply the per acre recommended products by the fraction of acre involved and find out we need 397 pounds of cooked bone meal, 207 pounds of blood meal, and 83 pounds of langbonite for that potato patch. Small amounts of organic nutrients are available from many sources in Alaska. There are hundreds of different forms available in Alaska retailers. These would include greenhouses, garden centers, big box stores, hydroponics shops, co-ops, and feed stores. There are even more available from online suppliers. On a commercial scale, bags of 25 and 50 pounds, there are not as many choices available in Alaska. Alfalfa meal, bone meal, fish bone meal, blood meal, green sand, kelp, seabird guano, bat guano, Langbonite, calfaz, are all sources of N, P, and K. Gypsum is a source of calcium and sulfur, and dolomitic lime is a source of calcium and magnesium. Sometimes, growers have access to local nutrient source. In this case, the grower has access to large amounts of cow manure with bedding and would like to minimize purchased nutrients. Remember, before using a natural product as part of a nutrient management plan, you have to document the various nutrient levels of the material and determine the moisture level of the material. Also, lab results will be on a dry weight basis or on an as-sent sample basis, but field conditions change so calculations are needed to determine the actual amount of product to apply to get the desired nutritive effect. Even so, sometimes you may still have to supplement with purchased organic fertilizers to achieve the desired nutrient goals. In this case, the lab results for the manure sample were 50% sample moisture, an estimated nitrogen release of 25%, total nitrogen of 17 pounds per ton, total phosphorus of 11 pounds per ton, and total potassium levels of 14 pounds per ton. These analyses are based on a partially dried sample at 50% moisture. So if the manure has been rained on, the values have to be adjusted for the additional moisture. The sample analyzed was analyzed at 50% moisture. 
but since the sample was in, rain has made the actual pile 75% moisture. So within the sample the lab analyzed, a ton of manure would have 1,000 pounds of water, 17 pounds of nitrogen, 11 pounds of phosphorus, 419 pounds of potassium, and 958 materials of other solids. But in our pile that has been rained on, at 75%, a ton of manure would have 1,500 pounds of water, 8.5 pounds of nitrogen, 5.5 pounds of phosphorus, and 7 pounds of potassium, along with 479 pounds of other solids. Unfortunately, not all of the nitrogen in the manure will be available in the first year. The laboratory estimates only 25% will be released for crop use. So only 25% of the 8.5 pounds per ton will be available. So the actual nitrogen level available for that year is 2.12 pounds per ton, and we want 80 pounds per acre. So we need to apply 37.7 tons per acre to meet our nitrogen needs. The original nutrient management plan was nitrogen based. Checking the phosphorus index worksheet for a 207 pound per acre application, the original 3 in rate of phosphate applied becomes a 4, but the plan is still a nitrogen based nutrient management plan. So the increased level of phosphorus is acceptable. Remember, the potato patch is a little under half an acre, so only 17.3 tons of manure will meet the seasonal needs for the potato patch. Be sure to discuss the excess phosphorus and potassium application associated with this manure application. The client probably won't be able to continue to apply manure in the future until crop removal draws the phosphorus and potassium levels down so the soil will be able to accept more P and K without causing negative environmental impacts. There are many potential sources of local nutrients. Manure, compost, spent grain, spoiled crops, mainly hay, seaweed, fish gurry, fish bones, animal offal, and even coffee grounds from various coffee shops. Remember, the material must be analyzed for NPK levels before using them in a nutrient management plan. Making lime recommendations. When we look at the lab results, there are usually two pH values given, the water pH and the buffer pH. The water pH measures the pH of the soil solution. The pH of the hay soil is 6.6. The pH of the potato soil is 5.8. The water pH is what the plant roots experience. The buffer pH is a value used on the lime recommendation chart in TechNote 16 to determine the amount of lime we need to add to bring it to a desired pH. The buffer pH of the hay sample is 7.2, and the buffer pH of the potato patch is 6.5. Don't confuse the buffer pH with the pH range desired by plants. That's the water pH. Buffer pH is just used to look up the lime recommendation on the lime chart. At a buffer pH of 7.2, the hayfield doesn't warrant a lime application. But at a buffer pH of 6.5, it'll take 3,000 pounds of lime to raise the soil pH from 5.8 to 6.0. The common types of lime available in Alaska are ag lime, which is calcium carbonate, dolomitic lime, which is a combination of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate, and prilled lime. Prilled lime is ag lime in coated pellets to better go through the fertilizer spreader. There are also some less common liming materials available in Alaska. Marl is a soil deposit with calcium carbonate and other materials and wood ash have strong alkalis that can also raise pH. Not all liming materials are equal. 
the recommendation is made on the basis of aglime, which has a calcium carbonate equivalent of 100%. Dolomitic lime is a little stronger, and prilled lime is a bit weaker. For prilled lime, marl, and wood ash, you have to know the calcium carbonate equivalent to know the amount of lime to actually use to raise the pH. In this case, the farmer plans on using ag lime, so 3,000 pounds per acre of ag lime times 0.46 acres requires 1,380 pounds of ag lime. So the farmer will purchase 28 50 pound bags of ag lime. When purchasing smaller amounts of ag lime in 50 pound bags, sources available are Wagon Wheel Garden and Pet in Homer. Panama Red Gardening Supply in Kenai, Alaska Mill and Feed in Anchorage, Alaska Farmer Cooperative in Delta Junction. Globe Creek Mining is a quarry making lime near Fairbanks. And also the big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, Fred Myers, and Walmart usually carry 50 pound bags of lime. If you're looking for lime in larger amounts, usually by the ton, there are only three sources in Alaska that sell it in large quantities. Alaska Mill and Feed in Anchorage, Alaska Farmers Cooperative in Delta Junction, and Globe Creek Mining in Fairbanks. And none of them offer delivery, but again, they'll work with local trucking firms to bring the product to your farm. Globe Creek Mining has a lime spreader available. In summary, the soil test is the foundation of all nutrient management plans. The nutrient recommendations are given in Technical Note 16, and the lime recommendations are given in Technical Note 15. The recommendations can be met using conventional fertilizer, organic fertilizer, or local sources of materials that have nutritive value. The NPK rates on the bag are amounts available in the season of application, not the total amounts. The fertilizers 83216, 16616, 102020, and 211111 are all readily available from vendors statewide. The Delta Farmers Cooperative and the Alaska Mill and Feed in Anchorage will custom blend larger orders for growers. 25 or 50 pound bags of ag lime are readily available from vendors across the state. And large quantities of lime are available from Delta Farmers Cooperative, Alaska Mill and Feed, and Globe Creek Mining. Thank you very much. Please contact your local USDA NRCS office with your Alaska nutrient availability questions. This presentation was made through a collaboration between the Alaska Association of Conservation Districts and the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service.